is Trudeau backing Kate Terrell? Are Trudeau's charges credible? We're standing up for the rules-based order. We're standing up for the rule of law. Can ties with Canada improve? What do Indian voters think? Political Stock Exchange. Big focus on news track. What do respondents think of the downward spiral in Indo-Canada ties and all the charges that Canada has leveled in India's pushback? Let's get started with the results of the India Today Sea Voter Political Stock Exchange. Question number one. Why is Justin Trudeau accusing India of killing a Khalistani terrorist? Here are the responses. I'll tell our viewers once again. We've got two cuts for the data. One is the overall national aggregate cut and the second is an expanded sample just in Punjab. So I'll have uh, soon results for Punjab as well, separate from the overall national numbers. So here are the overall national numbers. Why is Trudeau accusing India of killing Khalistani terrorists? Nijar, to benefit in domestic elections, say 26% of the respondents, because his party is under pro-Khalistani pressure, say 23% of the respondents. Trudeau is diverting attention, say 21% of the respondents, because India is demanding action against the likes of Nijar and those who are fanning Khalistani flames, say 13%. Trudeau was ignored in the G20, say only 6%. So the bigger number there is that he's trying to benefit in Canadian elections and because he's under pressure from pro-Khalistani elements. Let's look at how these numbers stack up in Punjab. Now here are the results from Punjab on the same question. To benefit in polls, 28% pro-Khalistani party pressure, 15%. Diverting attention, say 18%. India's demand for action, 11 Trudeau ignored in the G20, say 6 Now the interesting thing there is that the sentiment in Punjab seems to be aligned with the national sentiment on this question. So it's not as if the two data sets are divergent. They are trending in the same direction. Question number two on your screen now. What do you make of the charge that Justin Trudeau has leveled that India is responsible for the killing of Nijar? Here are the responses. 57% of the overall respondents say no, India is not responsible for killing Nijar. Even amongst those who said they voted for the opposition, 54% of the respondents say no, India did not kill Niger. So the sentiment very strongly has people suggesting they don't think India is responsible for the killing of this Khalistani terrorist. Let's take a look at the responses in Punjab on the same question. Here it's 37% saying no. Nationally it was 57% saying no. So it's 20% less than that, 37% say no, 29% say yes. Uh, nationally it was 16, so 13% more people say India may have been responsible for the killing of the Khalistani terrorist. I want to show you question number three. What if Indian agencies killed the Khalistani terrorist? What if India actually ordered an extrajudicial killing? Do you support that or not? They did the right thing, say 61. Six out of ten respondents in this sea voter India today, political stock exchange tracker say yes, if India did kill a Khalistani terrorist, they, the government did the right thing, say 61. They are wrong, say 14. Let's look at the mood in Punjab on the same question. Even in Punjab, 40% of the respondents say yes, they did the right thing. They are wrong, say 25. This is, of course, India is denied that they are responsible for the killing of the Khalistani terrorists. But even if that is somehow true, in Punjab also 40% say, yes, that's the right thing. Nationally, that number was at 61. So with this, now let me introduce our guests who are joining me on this broadcast. I want to welcome first Yashwan Deshmukh, the lead cephologist at Sea Water. With us also on this broadcast for context and perspective is uh, Brahma Chalani, one of India's best known strategic affairs experts. We have Navdeep Singh Suri, distinguished fellow at the Observer Research Found, uh, Foundation, former ambassador. And we have Manjinder Singh Sirsa, national secretary and spokesperson of the BJP. I want to go across first and foremost to Yashwan Deshmukh. On your numbers, 
the mood very clearly seems to suggest that people think that Trudeau is doing what he is uh, because he wants to benefit in the Canadian elections and because he's under pressure from pro-Khalistani elements inside Canada. Well, Rahul, uh, one very interesting thing which is coming from this particular round of PSE poll, I mean, from us. Uh, earlier, every time we did a tracking poll on any any such pressing issue, we could see a very, very partisan kind of uh, uh, answers uh, uh, based on the political orientation ideologies. I guess that after a long time, after, uh, you know, we got to an issue where actually there is hardly any division as far as the opposition voters or NDA voters are Correct. concerned. So particularly this is, and, and also the fact that uh, even though uh, I was expecting some difference as far as uh, response from the rest of India and Punjab is concerned, but it is not as big a change that uh, would have been contrasting of sorts. So arguably this is one, uh, ironically for Canada and Trudeau, uh, it is one thing one issue which has kind of united more or less people across India and and, and whatever uh, whatever uh, the way many many in the West might have been thinking of Indians having different opinion or different uh, idea on this particular uh, 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 power play or game of accusation. That's a very important point Yashwan Deshmukh me makes because since the time I've been running the results of the political stock exchange on no issue has the opinion amongst opposition voters and government voters been so aligned as it is on the issue of India, Canada, Trudeau's charges and India's pushback? That shows the level of congruence there is across the political divide. Uh, Brahma Chalani, 57% of the respondents nationally say India did not kill the Khalistani terrorists. And even if it were true that Indian agencies did kill the Khalistani terrorists, 61% seem to support the move. What do you make of the kind of responses we've picked up in the political stock exchange? Well, first, when you have a dreaded international fugitive that is wanted in India for multiple acts of terror, including bombing a cinema that killed or wounded 46 people, he also assassinated a politician. So obviously, his death, by whatever means, can only be welcomed by people in India. You, 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 won't, you won't find a majority opinion opposing the fact that he died, that he died. Whether he died of natural cause or he died of unnatural cause, that's a different issue. But the fact that a dreaded terrorist is gone is something that Indians can only welcome. Do you want to just quickly recap for those watch, watching the charges against K.S. Nijjar because a lot of people in Canada and elsewhere are trying to project him as a Sikh preacher in charge of a Gurdwara, a man of religion, not a man of violence. The thing is that like some of the prominent uh, fugitives from India that are based in Canada's British Columbia province, these guys entered Canada illegally, including Mr. Nijjar. They entered Canada illegally with the help of criminal bands. And given the growing Sikh militancy in British Columbia, in particular in Canada, there is a growing nexus between criminal bands and radical Khalistanis, which has led to frequent gangland killings. Nijjar was very much part of this nexus. In fact, after he illegal, illegally entered Canada, twice he applied for refugee status, and each time his application was rejected by authorities. And that's the background of this guy who was wanted in India for multiple acts of terror. But he was not, he was not on India's list of most wanted terrorists. So I you know, need to make that clear, because there are a number of terrorists that are hiding abroad. There are household names in India. For example, everybody knows about Hafiz Saeed, uh, Masood Azhar, etc. Dawood Abraham is another example. But, you know, until this guy died, not many people knew about him in India because he was not among the most wanted terrorists in India. Okay. Now, Manjinder Singh Sirsa, you know, what is interesting in the data is the fact that whether the voter is an NDA voter 
or he is voting for the opposition, there is a high level of alignment on questions to do with India, India Canada, uh, Khalistan, Trudeau's action, the charges. It seems the mood in the country is very similar regardless of which side one sits on the political divide. No, definitely the mood has to be similar. Uh, reason being, uh, everybody is a patriot here. And when it comes to a country, uh, I don't feel any single person will stay, uh, say that I don't stand with my country. Now, here the question is that Trudeau is raising this issue in the parliament. Being a prime minister, he's supposed to give evidence rather by saying, yeah, I doubt, or mujhe shak hai, or something word like this cannot be a word for a international when you are using this for a counterpart with other country, vice versa. So by saying this, that I doubt that India could be involved or India could be involved in this uh, act of violence or in this killing, by simply saying that yesterday also he gave a statement. He said India should uh, join us, India should uh, help us out in finding. So that, whether he has asked any kind of help, whether India has denied any kind of help, he never said this so. So everybody in this nation knew now that what Trudeau did is for it's a political stunt. He did why he did so because he had a blacklash when he went back to Canada from India because nobody uh, in G20, the other countries made be America, England, nobody cared for him. So that okay. was the media was ruining his life like there. But that was the reason he came out of the parliament suddenly raised this question. So even if he was aware of this fact, while before coming to India he could have said that or. This, he could have waited to conclude the investigation. And thirdly, day before yesterday, another uh, criminal was killed there, another mafia down or whatever you say was killed there. Who is responsible for his killing? Who is responsible okay. for his killing? Absolutely. So, Nav uh, Navdeep Suri, you've been a... That this was a total you've... drama. Okay. Navdeep Suri, you've been a diplomat. You also understand politics. I want to show our viewers the current popularity numbers of Justin Trudeau uh, relative to his opponent's in Canadian politics, there's an election coming up in a year or so from now. Who is the preferred uh, prime ministerial candidate? Uh, Trudeau's popularity stands at only 31%. 40% would like his uh, principal opponent, Pierre Polivier, uh, to be the next prime minister. 22% want Jagmeet Singh of the NDP. Remember, Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh are in an alliance. Uh, and uh, Pierre Polivier is at 40%. He's number one. Now, this assertion that's being made that he's doing this to salvage low uh, popularity ratings, to what extent do you believe that that could be true? Because even in the sea voter data, most people think he's doing it to benefit in local elections and he's under pressure from the Khalistani lobby. Well, I think that seems self-evident and he's been doing this uh, for several years. Um, I think the... Uh, attachment to the Khalistani lobby seems to be directly proportional to his uh, falling numbers. Uh, and uh, But otherwise, we've seen it in his Bhangra gigs, we've seen it in his uh, various appearances, uh, trying to curry favor with a section of the Sikh community in, uh, uh, in Canada. But Rahul, I want to make two points, uh, if I may. One is because perhaps I'm sitting in Amritsar, uh, and you've um, uh, drawn a poll in Punjab. Uh, so let me take a shot at the very interesting numbers that you threw up. Even while there's a great deal of uh, uh, agreement, and, and your numbers showed that, uh, that, uh, you know, on the India-Canada issue, India is doing the right thing, and, and, and uh, uh, there was no difference between your numbers in, in India as a whole and in Punjab. But there is a real disquiet in Punjab because it disproportionately sends people to Canada, right? Of the millions strong, whatever uh, Indian community is, 60% is from Canada. And, and, and today, when you read the headlines and we look at all the newspapers and listen to some of the commentary on YouTube, uh, the sense you get is two kinds of worry. One is people whose families are in Canada uh, and who were waiting for their parents and others. To the, there's a holiday season coming up. There's a festive season coming up. There's a wedding season coming up. And there are people who are keen to come to India, as they do every year at this time of the year. What happens to their visas? Because we know it's a reality that many people, despite repeated urgings by our embassies, our consulates, and by the Ministry of External Affairs, have not availed of the OCI card. 
Now, are they stranded? Are we going to find ways to deal with it? People who have legitimate reasons to come to India over the next three, four months, however long it is. Secondly, in Amritsar, and I'm sure in other cities in Punjab, there's a real disquiet about people who have deposited fees, 15, 20 lakhs, for their kids to be admitted to U uh, Canadian universities, and who are now thinking, what's going to happen to their visas? Because even though the Canadians haven't announced it reciprocally, and perhaps won't, because they need those students to fund their universities, but from the perspective of the persons whose kids are in the pipeline uh, today, the downsizing of Canadian missions in Delhi uh, means longer visa queues automatically. So I, I just wanted to say that there's a okay. humanitarian Those are important aspect. points. I want Manjinder Sirsa from the BJP to respond. You are raising the concern about the community having a sense of being disquiet and concerned. There are families in Canada, virtually everyone in Punjab has somebody in Canada and vice versa amongst the Punjabi community. Many of them want to come back, the holiday season is here. There are students who are in the pipeline to go. You want to reduce the size of the High Commission, that means that visa uh, delays increase. It's already uh, several months late, it could be delayed even further. Manjinder Sirza, how does your government and your party respond to these concerns from Mr. Suri? So definitely these are the biggest concerns when it comes to Punjab and the people living in Canada because as Mr. Suri very, very well said that most of the people are from Punjab. We are also concerned about that. We are also looking at that. The situation is getting turn, turning to the worst point after the situation created by the Prime Minister of Canada. When he threw no, out but, our diplomat. But I was speaking uh, without, earlier in the so day to Bikram Majiti and he said, why should an entire community, an entire state be punished for the actions of a few? Definitely. Target the Khalistanis, go after them rather than put the entire community and an entire state in a state of limbo. No, nobody is putting an entire state or entire community. Definitely, that's a big challenge. As I very well said, it's a big case challenge for us also. Because uh, either uh, half of the families in Canada and half of the families in Punjab. And we are facing, but the problem here is the question should be asked from Trudeau, not from the Indian Prime Minister, because he was the one who threw out our diplomat. He came, he went to the Parliament, said no, something, but the visa, came out, no, no, no. And simply sir, sir, out the difference the, is that diplomat and said you have to leave the country within. Asking a diplomat to leave is between services. governments. Asking a diplomat yeah, to right. leave is between governments. Putting all visas in suspension then impact the larger community and there are many more Indians wanting to go to Canada than there are Canadians wanting to come to India. So there are two different set of people. So one are the Canadian. No, no Indian requires a visa. They already have a visa and have OCI card. But yes, the people who have taken uh, the passport, Canadian passport there, there will be no problem. And the government will take care of them also. It is not for the Indian people who are come, want to come back. I, I'm, I'm sure that government will not see any single person get affected by this order. I'm sure about that. Now, Deep Suri raised the con concern about students who are in the pipeline. If the High Commission gets, uh, you know, the staff strength is reduced, uh, then there are concerns that there'll be massive visa, visa delays. No, but visa delay f from Canadian side or from Indian side? It cannot be from Indian side because the Canada, Canadian visa is to is issue by a Canadian government here in, in Delhi. That's what I'm so saying. So if they the reduce the size of the High government. Commission, it will increase the pressure on the officers who are there, it will increase the time it will take for people to get visas. No, Rahul, but that is not our concern. That has to be taken care by the uh, Canadian government. But you have told them that you have to do your own people, so our impact is on the people of the impact is on our people. No, the impact is on our people, definitely. But the visa, I am just talking about the visa and the students, in, okay. in, who want to travel from Punjab to Canada, so it is not our government who has to decide. It's a park, it's a sorry Canadian government who has to decide this. So I don't believe that Surisa must be right on one part that if we are not issuing a visa to the people living in Canada, that's a big question here. But when it comes to the people living in Dell in, in India want to go to Canada, that is a Okay, let me get Navdeep Suri to respond very briefly because I have a lot of questions I want to go through, but let him respond to what he's heard from the BJP spokesperson, I, I, Mr. Suri. I, 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 I think I think uh, what I was trying to say is when we announced a decision for the Canadians to downsize their diplomatic representation in India to the same level as ours in uh, Canada, it has an unintended consequence. And that unintended consequence is that there are fewer, fewer consular staff to process visas. 
that's the limited point I'm making that uh, it is the classic case of the law of unintended consequences, uh, where the humanitarian impact will be felt in Punjab, and already people are talking about it. I'm saying this because I happen to be here. No, sure. I want to run now and show our uh, viewers responses to the other questions. And this is an interesting question from Yashwan Deshmukh's team, because a country like Israel, a country like the United States, especially post 9-11, has been going out and doing targeted killings of those who act against American uh, interest. When a Zawahiri is killed, or when an Osama bin Laden is killed, everyone watching typically tends to applaud. Well done, Obama. Well done, Bush. Should India do the same? Here are the responses to that question. This is going to generate a lot of chatter. This question from uh, the political stock exchange, should terrorists be hunted and eliminated? 83%. Eight out of ten respondents in this poll say, yes, terrorists should be hunted and killed. Uh, let's look at the responses from within Punjab. In Punjab as well, 64% of the respondents say, terrorists should be hunted and killed. 17% say no. That is massive. That just suggests, remember, these are always controversial because it's extrajudicial. You're going into somebody else's country, killing uh, a terrorist over there. If you get a big catch, your voters like it. It's always diplomatically tough to handle. But the mood in India, very clear and very direct. What's your reaction to the killing? Uh, what's your reaction to the expulsion of an Indian diplomat by Canada? 18% uh, say it doesn't matter. No reaction. 39% uh, say India should expel one Canadian diplomat, which it already has. Expel all Canadian diplomats, say 26%. That's a bit over the top, and that's just the populist mood. I won't take that very seriously. Is Trudeau supporting Khalistani terrorism? Let's come to this question. Is the government of Justin Trudeau and the Prime Minister himself supporting Khalistani terrorists? 60% say yes, 18% say no. In Punjab, responses to that same question are different, quite naturally. Here, 39% are saying yes. 33% are saying no. Nationally, the number was 60 saying yes and 18% saying no. Yashwan Deshmukh, this one number that you've put out in this poll will generate a lot of chatter. 83% of the overall respondents say India should hunt down terrorists. Yes, yeah. Rahul, and again, the highlight is not that how many want to say that the terrorists should be hunted down. The highlight for me is the sink of the opposition voter and the NDA supporters. What Correct. it tells us is that on certain issues, there are three different layers of question that we tried to ask. Number, we tried to check if people believe that Indian agencies did it. That was roughly in the 60s, uh, that they believe that Indian agencies did not do it. Then we asked, what if they did it? Is that, if, would that be a right thing to do? The number goes up to 70%, you know, that, yeah, it's the right thing to do. And then we ask a sweeping question, should they be, you know, I mean, eliminated altogether and no matter where they are kind of uh, sentiment, it goes further to 80%. And regardless of the political divide, regardless of the ideology, the numbers are more or less in sync on the same line. What is important for here to understand why we ask this question and to understand is a fact that probably very, very fine line, Rahul, that Western uh, press, Western media, and including Western diplomats should be understanding that Many of them think that it's because of the current government in charge that, you know, uh, these kind of aggressions are coming in, these kind of emotions are coming in. But what they are not realizing that in a democracy like India, even if tomorrow Congress comes to power, even if tomorrow Mr. Rahul Gandhi becomes the prime minister, he just cannot do away with the public emotion on such an issue. Probably no matter who comes to power, he is going to toe the same line. He is going to take the same action. This is a different kind of India they are dealing with. Is the public emotion is very clear, regardless, across the political support line. And that emotion is going to support no matter who becomes the prime minister, no matter who wins the election. This kind of public emotion is going to uh, force the government that they are going to choose, whichever okay. way they choose, to, to go about the way they want to go. So, Brahma Chalani, if I were to enter the realm of speculation just for a moment, when Prime Minister Modi was in opposition campaigning to be Prime Minister as Chief Minister of Gujarat, he said uh, publicly that why can't, why is Dawood Ibrahim uh, not being taken down? What is this idea of just giving dossiers 
uh, to Pakistan, why can't we do more? We know that uh, the likes of Ajit Doval, the national security advisor, again, he hasn't spoken when he's been in government, obviously, but while in opposition, advocated uh, taking down terrorists and being far more proactive than our government had been in the past. Manohar Parikar, when I interviewed him, spoke of using a thorn to take out another thorn. So one of the reasons why uh, this is being said or looked at is because this government has been far more aggressive in its posture against terrorists than the government of uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh. You have to distinguish rhetoric from action. Mm -hmm. Has under Modi, India done any hit job? Are the terrorists based in Pakistan still thumping their noses at India? There are more than 100 UN designated terrorists based in Pakistan. Several of them are wanted in India for hundreds of murder. For example, Hafiz Said is wanted for the 2008 Mumbai massacre. What has India done to Hafiz Said or Masood Azhar or Daud Abraham or name any other prominent terrorist? I mentioned earlier that Hardeep Singh Nijar was a little known terrorist in India. If India has done nothing against the well-known, most wanted terrorists, you think India would have gone after Hardeep Singh Nijar? And what is the basis of Trudeau's allegation? The police have not arrested a single suspect. They have not even found the car in which these killers escaped after killing Nijar. There is no police statement of any kind. He's relying on inputs from intelligence. Intelligence is not evidence. But if you want to rely on intelligence, you can do what other governments have done in the past. They have provided photographic evidence, audio evidence, forensic evidence. They claim to have evidence. Do you buy that, Brahma Chalani? They claim that there is evidence which has been shared with the Five Eyes, five eyes country. Do you buy that or do you think that's just posturing? Nothing has been released. They're talking about surveilling Indian diplomats. Release the audio. For example, how did the Khashkogi case unfold? The Turkish government released video footage of Khashkogi going inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul and not coming out. They had audio evidence of screams inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. They provided clear evidence of Saudi Arabia's hand in the murder and disappearance of Kashgogi. I can name several other cases, famous international cases, where flinching evidence has been provided. Here, not even an audio has been released. See, when, when you rely on intel, you're basically getting into a spy game. Because what intelligence agencies do is they collect evidence, not collect information, not evidence, and the information is processed and tailored to advance the geopolitical interests of a country. Now, for example, in the case of, in the present case, what they're calling credible allegations, look at it, it's not even, they're not even calling it evidence, you know, the Trudeau's own words, credible allegations, as if allegations can be credible, allegations are allegations, there's credible evidence, but not credible credible um, allegations, you know, uh, and there is no evidence of any kind. Okay. So, um, but, but I think it's important to keep in mind one thing that, that, you know, about hit jobs, that when he stood up in Parliament Trudeau and moaned the death of this, what he called Canadian citizen, actually, a, you know, a dreaded international terrorist fugitive, and he offered condolences to Nietzsche's family, that same prime minister last year celebrated publicly the U.S. assassination of Al-Zawari, saying it's a step toward a safer world. Same guy. Just look at his stunning hypocrisy. Al-Zawari was an old man, retired terrorist, of no threat to anybody. He was taken out by the Americans because Biden wanted to show that he's a tough leader after the debacle in Afghanistan, in surrendering Afghanistan to the Taliban. But here is Niger. He is being shielded by the, uh, by the Trudeau government. He's a threat to India. He's a threat to Canadian security. And yet, when he's, when he's dead, Trudeau sheds tears in parliament. 
The guy's okay. hypocrisy is, is appalling. Now, Navdeep Suri, from a diplomatic lens, how do you respond to the overwhelming majority that seems to suggest that India should go out, in fact, and take down terrorists? Now, this is the kind of thing uh, you never admit to, never accept publicly, legally. And yet, at this moment, this growing desire to do what Israel or the United States do. So I think, you know, you have a disconnect between the sentiment that the public has articulated in your poll and what is very visible in social media, uh, which is a, a back slapping, back chest thumping kind of thing. Yes, we did it kind of uh, sentiment. And you have the denial from the government. Maybe a better approach would be what the Israelis do so effectively, which is standard, neither confirm nor deny. Uh, that ambiguity that the Israelis use, and others use it too, uh, is, it, you know, keeps the deniability around. It also leaves the fear in the minds of uh, those uh, who may or may not be targeted, that, you know, the long arm of your law can reach out wherever you are if you have been guilty of perpetrating a terrorist act. Uh, but, you know, on, on, on Mr. Chalani's point, um, let me just say that it isn't as if nothing has been done. Now, what we have been fairly successful in, I think, over the last few years is using our excellent relationship with the Saudis and the Emiratis to secure uh, the repatriation of people that we really wanted. Abu Jindal from, uh, uh, from Saudi Arabia, for example, who was uh, involved in 2611, Farooq Takla from uh, um, Dubai, who was a henchman of Dawood Ibrahim's. Uh, so, you know, at least at the diplomatic level and the much closer uh, sharing of information and collaboration between the intelligence agencies at the highest levels has netted us uh, a few gains. Um, but, you know, I want to just come also again to that difference in numbers between the rest of uh, India and Punjab. Because I think what I hear around town is people saying, are our kids in Canada, are our brothers in Canada, again, going to have to be afraid that they may be dubbed a Khalistani, even though they have nothing to do with it? Will they be dubbed a terrorist? Will that travel become harder? Uh, you know, uh, so, so uh, I, you know, it's something that your viewers should keep in mind that if there is one thing that Sikhs in particular are sensitive about is, don't question their patriotism. They fight on the front line, and you know the evidence is there in all the uh, tricolor wrapped bodies that come back. And 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 it's a real sensitive pain point for anyone. And I've seen some uninformed commentary going around once again. Uh, no, absolutely, I saw from Kangana you know, North as well. Just anyone who does it, commentary does it, does it, saying that it Sikhs need to prove that they're not Khalistani. Sikhs don't need to prove that they're not Khalistani. The government needs to act against those who are, rather than trying to brandish an entire proud community in the same brush. Yeah. That is completely abhorrent. I, I think any community, any community can have a loony fringe, uh, treat it as that, keep it beyond the pale, uh, and, and, and don't tarnish the mainstream. Oh, absolutely. That is a very, very important messaging because even during the farm protest, we saw. Some people, including ministers in the government, try and brandish or question the entire community, which is absolutely unacceptable and very unfortunate. Question those who pick up arms against the state or those who are f fueling incendiary fires. You cannot make this an affront to the pride of an entire community. That is completely unacceptable. Uh, are Indian diplomats in Canada safe? Here are the responses. 54% say yes, they are safe. 27% of the respondents say no, Indians in Canada are not safe. I'll show you the results in Punjab. 35% say yes, Indian diplomats in Canada are unsafe. 41% uh, say no, they are not unsafe. So overall, 54% saying Indian diplomats in Canada are unsafe. Last question, are good relations with Canada now impossible? 37% of the respondents say it's impossible. Uh, we can't possibly have good relations with Canada. 39% of the respondents say no, it's still possible to have good relations with Canada. And that is where I wrap up uh, this week's political stock exchange. Uh, very, very timely, this data set from Yashwan Deshmukh and his team at Seawater, because you've got your opinion, and now you've got a lot of data with which you can judge and weigh that opinion in terms of whether it is in consonance with the national mood, the mood in Punjab, 
or at variance. Yashwan Deshmukh for turning this around so quickly for us. A big thank you to you and your team at Seawater. Thank you, Navdeep Suri, for joining us and also to Brahma Chalani and to Manjinder Sirsa. Joining us now live and exclusive from Chandigarh is one of the senior most Akali leaders, General Secretary of the Akali Dal, Bikram Singh Majithia now joins me on India Today. Majithia Sahib, Satsrikal, welcome. I want to start by asking you about the decision of the Ministry of External Affairs to suspend temporarily visas to Canadian nationals who may wish to come to India. This has caused a lot of chatter in Punjab amongst those who are hoping to go out, who have family in Canada. As a former senior minister of the Akali government in Punjab, what do you make of the manner in which India-Canada ties seem to be spiraling down a very slippery slope? I think, Rahul, it's very sad. As uh, mature democracies and as uh, one of the largest democracy and one of the oldest democracies, you need to handle, things, handle these issues very differently. Because one has to realize one thing, that every second house in Punjab has a family member sitting in Canada. And uh, it's going to send a lot of, a lot of heartburn and there are going to be lots of economic social, personal losses that will be caused to people. How can you expect a child who wants to get back to his ailing parents that he cannot come back? Or some old parent who wants to quickly, his, uh, has an health issue that has to be addressed? Or some, someone's expecting, wants to be with the mother? Someone's passed away? I, and it's uh, this, this particular season now that's coming up. October, November, December, January, February, March are those months when you see the maximum number of uh, the Punjabi diaspora coming back to India and Punjab. And they've got serious, serious family ties here. Uh, whether it's a, a celebration in the family, whether it is any uh, personal or social function, or whether they are religious functions. You have a lot of people coming in for uh, the New Year's. But Majid is nobody who already has a visa has been Gokuru. stopped from coming back. It's only Canadian nationals who don't have Indian visas who are you now know, wanting to apply for Indian visas. That's the only bar India has put at the moment, sir. You know, it needs to be spelled out very clearly. If you read the uh, newspapers today, and you read what people are talking about there, you know, it's, it's about one individual. Sort that matter, matter out the way it needs to be sorted out, law should be enforced. Whatever is the truth should come out, but why should everybody be put in the dock because of actions of a few? Punjabis are not known for that. Punjabis are the most patriotic people and I, it's so sad that uh, why should a Punjabi suffer because of actions of one individual? And uh, uh, Rahul, you're saying this, but the general impression is people have started cancelling their, uh, cancel, uh, cancelling their bookings. People who had booked for we weddings, they had a lot of Canadians, uh, friends and family coming in. Uh, they've started cancellation because they, this this uncertainty is not going to help both the countries, I feel. Your dialogue can never stop. And I feel uh, if you continue with your dialogue, continue with trade, it's when things uh, only get better. You shut it down with Pakistan, things have only got bad to worse. What do you make of people the charges that Justin Trudeau, stop. the Prime Minister of reasons. Canada, has leveled against India? Never before has India been accused of carrying out an assassination on foreign soil by a Western power. Uh, he didn't provide any evidence. He spoke of allegations, not of evidence, but he spoke of credible allegations. That's a bit of an oxymoron because it's essentially an allegation in the absence of any material evidence. What do you make of the charge that the Canadian Prime Minister has leveled against uh, the Indian state? You know, uh, I'm a too small a fry to comment on two governments or uh, two prime ministers. But I'll tell you one thing. The truth has to come out. You cannot make mere uh, allegations and get away. There are reasonable people sitting on either side. 
who are going to now question this action, question what he said in Parliament. We all have, uh, we have great respect for the democratic systems in both the countries. But end of the day, nobody will be allowed to get away by just making a statement. You will have to put the evidence on the table. Otherwise, you're going to come out looking very uh, stupid. And I, 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 and I'm nobody to comment on that. Let the agencies do their work. If he has evidence, he should put it out instead of just, I've, I've been reading his statements. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, like you and me, everybody has question marks about it. He, he talks about credible reasons. We are talking about credible evidence now. You can't accuse another country like this and you cannot, people cannot suffer because of your politics or anybody's politics. And let me tell you one thing, I'm repeatedly saying this, that, you know, the, it's all, it's so sad what's been happening over the last two days and it really pains to see this happening. Today's newspaper is full about NIA has uh, issued a, uh, a, a statement where there are these Khalistanis and all of them, are, an impression goes out as if Sikhs are the only Khalistanis. We, we are the most peace-loving, uh, patriotic people out there. Every Ardas of ours is about Sarbatada Pala. So to uh, make a narrative, to build a narrative of this sort, it, it's so, uh, so sad. And it's all, I, I end of the day, I think it's uh, time will tell, but it's all going to come down to politics. Uh, Hardeep Singh Nijjar, who was a very vocal advocate for Khalistan, uh, India describes him as a terrorist. The government of Justin Trudeau not even willing to concede that Hardeep Singh Nijjar was up to secessionist activities. When we see how Trudeau and his government clamp down on truckers who are protesting or those who don't like his vaccine policy. He's applying very firm national security laws. But when it comes to secession, separatism uh, directed at India, Trudeau suddenly gets very liberal about it. You know, I am, Rahul, I am nobody to comment on what Mr. Trudeau is saying or doing. It's his internal politics. Yes, we need to protect our country. And uh, one thing we must realize that we, uh, even the latest Galwan clashes or any uh, incident before that, whenever India has been at war with anyone, the maximum, the most supreme sacrifices have been made by Punjabis. And we should remember that always. So uh, what Trudeau is saying, what Trudeau, what is Trudeau's politics, I cannot comment on that. Yes, we will protect our borders. We need to protect our uh, country. But at the same time, we Punjabis are the most patriotic people. And I'm going to repeat that time and again, because it's a time and tested fact. And actions of a few, are, you cannot paint Punjab or any turbaned man in a particular way. That's what's bothering me today. No, absolutely. You don't even need to keep saying that. I think everyone who's watching realizes and acknowledges uh, fully the patriotism and the bravery of uh, the so, Sikh community. Uh, so Rahul, that, that leads me to that, that that leads me to the second question why why is because the maximum number of uh, people going out to canada are punjabis and all these uh, disruptions by both the government is in some way or the other directly or indirectly going to hurt that community uh, the maximum no but how do you then uh, suggest that the government deal with this issue because with the likes of Hardeep Nijjar and what we are seeing in Australia, the UK, the Khalistani movement with the help of the ISI backing and funding seems to be getting some kind of a second life, not in a secessionist violent form, but at least as far as propaganda, as far as trying to build a narrative is concerned, uh, they are now more vocal than they have been since the mid-90s. So what do you think about those who think that the ghosts of Khalistan are coming back in some way and that this is more vocal uh, and more visible than it has been in the past two decades? Rahul, I find it so amusing that we even give this importance because the people of, you have to ask the people of Punjab, where are they planning to make this Khalistan? Like it's there, uh, Canadian Premier, Mr. Ujjal Dasan said, and I read one of his statements, 
where he said that if they are talking about Khalistan, let them make it in Canada first. <laughs> People in Punjab are very happy in the present system. How? Why are we so concerned about what few uh, Canadians are saying who are never going to be coming back to India? Let us live in peace, man. Never. I, 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 I think it's more about, it's, sorry to say, but it's becoming more about politics now. It's less about the facts because you come out to the streets of Punjab, this is not even an issue. We are peace-loving, happy-go-lucky people and day in and day out pray for everybody's happiness. So what a couple of you, and I feel India is strong enough to handle a few uh, Johnnies who are making such statements. No, but these Johnnies seem to be creating a lot of trouble. For example, if and you I'm, see I'm, Pannu, uh, Pannu seems to be making very incendiary no, comments, we, including asking for action to be taken against Indian diplomats, uh, calling for action against Hindus who are in Canada and elsewhere, saying that they are anti-Canada. Now, if somebody listens to a joker like Pannu, a terrorist like Pannu, that could actually cause trouble because he is making highly incendiary comments. What action do you think we should take against someone like a Pannu? I, I think you shouldn't even listen to that, Johnny. He is just making those statements so that he can be heard. And we are giving him undue importance. The man is good for nothing. He's a lost case. He's not capable or in any position to harm India. He, he, India is a strong country and we keep boasting about us being strong. Then let's not bother about such jokers making any statement. Are you going to uh, get everybody to keep their mouth shut? There are going to be a number of such jokers making uh, crazy statements all the time. I think they have been given undue importance. But sir, the fact is that you Dupat look at Singh the large Pannu majority of Punjabis is asking and Canadian Hindus to leave. He's calling them anti-Canada. Now, if somebody is taking, you're saying he's a joker, ignore him. Now, if most people did that, great. But what if those few who believe in him start listening to him and start taking action, then suddenly what is just a verbal statement then becomes a violent act? You know, I, I, I've I been watching, uh, we've been hearing about this jo uh, Johnny for a very long time. He just makes these statements which mean nothing. And he makes it on every Independence Day, every Republic Day. It's his way of making money and we should realize that. A person himself, uh, I find it very amusing rather. Nobody even listens to him. I think we are giving him too much importance. GTS, have you spoken from the heart? You've made very firm points. Uh, you've also been diplomatic on the question of what we should do with Justin Trudeau. Quite naturally, that's something for the central government to deal with. Uh, you've spoken for and expressed the voice of the concern of the people of Punjab and those who have family and friends, which is uh, most, most in Punjab, quite frankly. Thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate your time. Vikram Singh Majitia, Celia Akali, the leader, speaking to us on the downward spiral in the ties between India and Canada. Majidia Saab, thank you.